Shalom, welcome and blessings, brothers and sisters, and thank you for joining us wherever you are around the world. Uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us for this very, very important uh, discussion. Baruch, it is great to see you. Very nice to see you, Christian. Thank you. We're going to get uh, right into this, Baruch. Um, I'm going to say controversial uh, for some people. Um, I'll start by way of introduction about being slain in the spirit or falling under the power of the Holy Spirit. It's most commonly being a slain in the spirit apparently happens, allegedly happens, when a minister or pastor lays hands on someone and that person collapses to the floor, supposedly overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit. Those who practice slain in the spirit use Bible passages to talk about people becoming as dead in Revelation 1 or falling upon their face in Ezekiel, Daniel, we'll look at these scriptures very shortly. However, there are a number of contrasts between a, this biblical falling on their face and the practice that we see in a lot of these churches that they call being slain in the spirit. We will look at a lot of scriptures, Baruch, but what are your opening comments? Well, first of all, I don't see, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, any place in the scripture where that term appears slain in the spirit correct in the same way we did not too long ago we we did an episode where we talked about the jezebel spirit and you pointed out accurately again that's not a term that appears in the scripture we do believe in the power of the holy spirit yes. and and that the holy spirit does indeed come upon individuals and empowers them to serve but to break out in uncontrolled laughter or to be able to not form words or not move. Uh, I think this is a, a unbiblical, and I don't see anywhere in the scripture that, that, for example, Paul, I think we would all agree that he was anointed with the spirit, that God used him mm -hmm. mightily. We don't see Paul having to, to lay on the ground in order to, to speak a message. We don't see Paul becoming uh, in, intelligible, uh, unintelligible in his words uh, because the Holy Spirit came upon him. The, the passage that I think of, and maybe we can get into that, is Saul. When Saul was going against the will of God, the Spirit came upon him, and, and he was brought to the ground and unable to move. But this was in the judgment of, of the Spirit of God upon him. So these things and how they're being practiced, I think they expose more of God's displeasure than his pleasure or the giving of the Holy Spirit in the sense of the anointing. Correct. And, and as you pointed out, Baruch, I mean, a lot of these people apparently fall and they convulse and all these kind of things. But one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. Um, the Holy Spirit is 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 one who uh, installs order uh, in the church and in the body of Christ. But uh, the first argument that we get, Baruch, is, oh, but you're putting God in a box. No, we're not. We know that God is sovereign. We know that the Holy Spirit is mighty, and he can do what he pleases. But we have to bring this back to Scripture. And like Baruch said, and I challenge anyone, please show me, where it says anywhere in the Bible that terminology is slain in the spirit. We're going to look at this a little bit uh, closer as well. For those who may not be aware of what we're talking about, which I, I doubt it, because many of you uh, know exactly what we're talking about, we're going to show, show a very short one-minute clip. Even that which you feel now, the weight, the weight, the weight of that glory. Quick, 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 quick. Get down there. Get down there. Show hands quick. Show hands 
hands, I said, quick. young men, they stand behind there and they, they need this. I, I give you praise, I give you praise, I give you praise, I give you praise. Just, just before we uh, go on, Brooke, I mean, let's, we could show hours and hours of clips from different false teachers, but to me, that's either a show or a demonic uh, manifestations. It's certainly a counterfeit move of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what, what are your thoughts after seeing that? Well, the thing that, that stood out to me was that uh, Benny Hinn, he needed uh, help to get off the stage, but he's supposed to be full of the Holy Spirit. So I, I think that there is a, a real subtle uh, message for us is the one that, that has the Holy Spirit but can't get down like the other two men did from the stage without being being helped. Uh, really, he had the Holy Spirit, and he he couldn't get down down from the stage on his own. So little things like that to me just just expose the the falsehood of what we saw. All right, uh, I want to try and get through this a little bit quickly because then we're going to go into some scripture, Baruch. So I'll be handing over to you. Uh, the biblical falling down was a person's reaction to what we saw in the vision. Or an event beyond ordinary happenings, uh, such as the transfiguration of Christ in Matthew 17. In the unbiblical practice of being slain in the spirit, the person responds to another's touch or to the notion of the speaker's arm. The biblical instances were far, very few and far between when they occurred and only rarely in the lives of a few people. In the slain of the spirit phenomenon, falling down is repeated event and experiences to many and over and over again. In the biblical instances, the people fall upon their face in awe at either what or whom or who they see. But in slain in the spirit, the counterfeit, they fall backwards, either in response to the wave of the speaker's arm or result of the church leader's touch or even a push in some cases. We need to ask ourselves, where is the fruit from all this happening? I'm going to go to the next slide because we're putting everything in Spanish as well, in red for our Spanish-speaking readers. but. Uh, it's it's exactly like you said, Baruch, before, and we're going to look at some scriptures on that. But uh, usually, if uh, some people did fall down, it was a judgment uh, from the Lord, or uh, people would fall on their faces in worship or in awe of what they were seeing. What are your comments, Baruch, before we proceed? I, I just don't see any, as you pointed out, fruit of the Spirit. I don't see ministry being done. For me, where the Holy Spirit is, ministry is going to be done. Lives are going to be blessed, encouraged, uh, healings, whatever. But these uh, spectacles, for the sake of the, the spectacle itself, to me, I don't see anything that is glorifying to God. I don't see any fruit coming from it. I don't see any ministry being done. I don't see lives being changed. I see simply a manifestation of what I would believe. And I know people are going to think this is judgmental. That's okay. I feel very comfortable in saying this, and I think you also alluded to it. What we're seeing is not the work or the manifestation of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. But what we see is something to me that's unclean, ungodly, unfruitful, and cannot be justified with anything we see in the scriptures. Before we move on, we know that there'll be some keyboard warriors that uh, will be saying, oh, but you guys, because I've seen it before, uh, you guys just focus on the word and uh, you're putting the Holy Spirit in a box and you've never experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, 
That is incorrect. Uh, even when Baruch and I were in Chile, we had the pleasure and the honor of uh, praying for some people after this, uh, uh, the lesson, um, the Bible teaching. And God moved in a mighty way, touching a lot of people. There were healings that took place. So there was a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. But we did not see one person act or fall in the way that we've just seen in those videos. I'm sure you would concur with that, Brooke. Absolutely. <clears throat> so let's look at some of these scriptures that are very important. John 18, Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now, when he said that to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. This is a scripture that a lot of these people use to justify what happens. But I'll hand over to you, Baruch, for your comments. Well, two, I think, very important things. This I am. Now, many people wrongly uh, translate when, when Moses says to God, whom shall I say has sent me? Many people say, I am who I am. That's not what it says. It says, I will be whom I will be. But what's interesting is that when Yeshua comes upon the scene, he does, in fact, use the Greek term, ego me, which is I am. And so, so it shows that in the book of Exodus, that was not the full redemption that, that was going to be manifested through Moses. There is, like Moses says in Deuteronomy 18 and verse 15, there is one coming after me, and this is the one who you should listen to. So this is why we see I am, and as you pointed out, uh, when this happened, they fell back. What were they doing? They had come to arrest him. And this is to show his identity. This is to show the power of his name, the power of his character. And, and therefore, they were, were contending against the purposes of God. Someone will say, well, well, God sent him into the world to be, to be crucified. Yes, but they weren't participating in a cognitive way, in a purposeful way with the plans of God. They were the disobedient ones, and we see what happened. They fell back. Correct. And we've got a comment there as well. Reason why this scripture cannot be used as evidence, God were not saved, and it was not a blessing over them. Let's go uh, to more of a conclusion. We are not claiming that all examples of being slain in the spirit are fake or responses to a touch or a push. Many people that claim to experience an energy or force that causes them to fall back. However, we find no biblical evidence for this concept. Yes, there may be some energy or force involved, but if so, it is very likely not of God and not a result of the working of the Holy Spirit. We need to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit as he is the one that will guide us into all truth. Before I hand over to you, Baruch, for your very important final comments, I just wanted to say once again, I can confess I was part of saving the Pentecostal church. For many years, I was around this type of behavior and it came to a point where I had to repent because I was part of that as well. And I always noticed that it was either people faking it or people being pushed, or I realized that it was a counterfeit move of the Holy Spirit because we were asking ourselves that question, how does this glorify God? What fruit are we seeing here? And the most important thing, it is not biblical. So we say this with love, brothers and sisters, because we know there are many out there that maybe are part of a church or they visit churches and this kind of thing happens. We just ask you to pray about it, seek the Lord in his word, and uh, the Holy Spirit will guide you. So, Baruch, I am just going to hand over to you now for your final comments. Well, again, we want to encourage people, but we want to encourage them in the truth. It's not out of animosity. It's not out of a spirit of judgment or condemnation. But we want to be an encouragement in the things of God and having a full experience in the Holy Spirit. And again, when we look at these events being slain in the Spirit and how they're so commonly uh, shown today, 
we simply don't see a biblical rationale to support it. We don't see evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. We don't see ministry being done. And I think the most troubling thing is that it's always based upon a personal experience. Instead of a personal experience, we need to understand that there is a, a community and that community should share in that same working, that same ministry of the Holy Spirit for a benefit. Not simply that I had my mo moment. It's not about your moment. It's about you being used to be a blessing to others. That is how the Holy Spirit moves in the life of disciples of our Lord and Savior. Amen. And thank you, Baruch, for your, for your comments and for your time. I think this is a very, very important teaching. I think it's uh, it's still widespread. We see that everywhere, not only in the States, but all over the world. Even here in Australia, we see a lot of that. And some people don't uh, may not lay hands or push, but they'll blow on people as well, and, and they fall exactly the same to the floor. So I thank you for your time, Baruch. A very, very important uh, topic. So, brothers and sisters, thank you for uh, joining us for today's discussion. Uh, we pray it's been a blessing to you. That's our main goal. It's been edifying and a blessing and that it glorifies the Lord. So from Baruch and Israel and from myself here in Sydney, Australia, thank you for joining us. And God willing, we will see you next time. Shalom and blessing.